Dime.tv Diplocephalus is creature number 22 in the Castlevania bestiary. It's described as a nauseating two-headed beast, although when defeated it may just drop a delicious strawberry tart. Well, hello once again and welcome back to Nathan Plays Castlevania Symphony of the Night. My name is Nathan and this is Castlevania for the Sony PlayStation. In the previous episode, we made our way all the way out to the library and then started working back through the castle after getting the Jewel of Open, which allows us to open magically sealed doors. It was a pretty exciting development. As you can see, we're 24.8% of the way through this adventure. And I'm going to play with the loading screen a little bit. This is a combination of down and right, just for you, just for you there. So we were now in the underground caverns with, as you recall, its smooth baseline. First thing we're going to do is work our way down. Uh, once again, the sub-weapon that I have here is uh, not especially useful in this scenario. There's a little bit of a drop here, so I guess we're going in. Whoa! Oh, good, there's a step before going all, quite all the way down. So this drops you uh, quite a long distance, and there happens to be another save point off to the side there. So what we're going to do after falling all that way down is climb back up. Yes, there's a few power-ups we want to pick up on the way up here, and then we're just going to drop back down again the other side. Some bone archers there. They go down a little bit more easily than the uh, purple knight fellows do. Got a replacement sub-weapon and got the dagger back, so that'll be excellent. It's time to start replenishing some of those hearts. In here we find a life max up, always a welcome uh, thing to come across. And then we're just going to keep working our way back up these stairs. More spear guards along the way. Bone archers. And the daggers actually work reasonably well against the spear guards, so that's nice. Not as good against the bone archers, not sure why. Spear guards will occasionally twirl their spears and block the things you throw at them, and I was, think I was trying to get that to happen, but it just didn't seem to be, uh, I mean, they were just taking the hits, which is fine. That's fine, too. Optionally, when you start off from the top of the underground cavern, you can go down through here to get to the bottom, but it's a pain in the butt, because spear archers can stick their spears upward, and you can't really see them too well. Here we find a heart max up. We're back at the top of the stairs, which is nice. A little breakable wall there. The way to tell is that the wall is slightly darker than the rest. And we picked up a bandana. Head over to the equip screen here, find the head area. It protects sensitive head parts. Well, that's nice. Gives you a little bit of extra intelligence back and a little extra def. I guess the cool-looking sunglasses have got to go. I, I think I'd rather protect my sensitive head parts than look cool. It's sort of the guiding principle of my life. He dropped a magic missile that we'll try it a little bit later. There we can go off to the right to save it once again, but we're just going to skip that, and we're just going to drop back down. That was fun. Fun little loop there. This time we are going to use this save point that's at the bottom of the shaft there. Because we have a little bit of a tense confrontation coming up. And I want to make sure that uh, if things go south I don't have to do that whole loop all over again. Music has stopped. Doors drop down. We have a Scylla Worm. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Doesn't seem to have a lot of um, attack patterns. Just kind of goes back and forth and then is hastily defeated. 
No, that was an easy boss fight. Why did I save for that? Ah, water. This is the first time, uh, actually, outside of the earlier stage in the game, right in the beginning, that I've encountered water, but water is bad for vampires. Apparently, in some vampire stories, the vampire is not able to cross running water, and so perhaps this is a reference to that. In any case, being submerged will damage you very, very quickly, and is something to be avoided. So as you can see, the water has risen up to the entrance where we came in, and it uh, looks like we're just... The only way out is through, kind of thing, because we're not going back through all that water. And at this point, I realized that I had actually uh, mistakenly equipped the wrong sword uh, quite a while ago, in the previous video, actually, after messing around with some items. So I should have been using the saber. I was not. Now we're going to get our damage back. I'm getting the magic missile ready, because we have a little more to do here. Look who it is. It's the rest of the thing that the Scylla Worm was uh, connected to. My magic missile was a complete misfire. It was uh, quite terrible. Oh, not Saber. Uh, sorry. Gladius. Gladius was the one we wanted. Saber was the one we were on. So we have a few more of the worms to defeat. The boss is also throwing uh, water bubbles that shape into skulls. And, uh, among other things, dropping rocks on us. I can rapid-fire the daggers there for some good damage. But basically the way through here is going to be to try and take out the heads first before moving on to the main sort of boss creature there. So we're going to take a quick battle break here and eat a pot roast, because that is what you do. We're down to 32 health. Pot roast is worth 50, so that was a nice little boost. And uh, we have a few, we have some more food and uh, potions handy. If we should need. The heads are down, those Scylla worms are out of the way, we can finally get to the main beast, which is Scylla herself. Riding on some sort of uh, wolf creature. Dropping rocks on our heads in a very rude fashion, and tossing water blades at us. Very nice. Well, what was she guarding? Looks like a cloak, and it is in fact the Crystal Cloak. The Crystal Cloak is special. It is an enchanted, semi-invisible cape. What that means, you will see in a moment. Uh, it may be a little bit difficult to tell on your screens, but the where the inside of the cloak is gray and quite visible, the outside is actually mostly transparent. Um, if I stand in a certain way, you can sort of wrap the cloak around you, and you can see that you can see the walls of the cave through the cloak, it actually has decent stats for the point of the game that we're in. And uh, occasionally sort of flickers. I think that has something to do with the way that it's working, which is that to fake a transparency, it's just flickering really, really fast in a lot of cases. We also found a new sword, the Scimitar, which slightly better stats than the Gladius that we were using. So we're going to throw that on. Sword. Oh, that was the other one. Sorry. Oh, wait, no, it was the saber all along. Ah, oh, man, I gotta get my inventory straight here. Even the sword we found isn't as good as the one that we bought. Anyway, the water has receded, obviously. I can grab this resist ice potion, which may have been useful. And I love just any, any game with a splash like that. I just love splashing around in, so of course I'm going to do that a little bit. If you watch the Goemon videos, I was constantly jumping in and out of water just because I, I enjoy it. I've always liked it. Well, that was kind of a big fight, so we're just going to take a quick save. And then it's time to move on through the rest of the underground caverns. Got some rather annoying frogs to deal with. There's a crate sitting here for no reason, and a whole bunch of uh, those spear-holding fellows in the way. So what do we do? Solve the puzzle. Here we go, move the crate so we can jump up, but how are we going to get through there? I have an idea. Uh, 
Excellent. We can also grab some mushrooms to munch on along the way if we get hungry. And there are lots of water sections that we're just going to have to avoid for now. Because it's much too painful to go around in them. It's always seemed a little bit funny to me that in a game that's full of magical monsters and beasties and legendary creatures, you just have ordinary frogs giving you heck. You come down here and there's just, just frogs. Not anything really supernatural about them. They're just really big and aggressive. Really aggressive. You can hear off to uh, on your left speaker, there's the rush of water. And we found ourselves a bit of a waterfall. Now we are going to take a bit of a plunge through the water because we want to grab these. The secret boots. One of the best items in the game. And I will demonstrate why a little bit later. They discreetly increase your height. They don't change your stats at all. But that's what they do. I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a bit, don't worry. It helps to have a good um, sort of frame of reference for what they do, and I couldn't, uh, I just couldn't find one at the moment. So here we have some frozen shades. I, I, you can see the cave is kind of iced over a little bit. And these frozen shades are gonna summon up big old crystals or icicles, rather, and shoot them at you. And that's bad. We don't want that. A lot nicer to just, uh, you know, hit them. There's the boatman here that we saw through the, t the uh, telescope earlier on. What's he got to say? I'll take you to a place which might be interesting for you. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Uh, I don't know why that was funny, but cool. Thank you. So Boatman here is uh, is here to get you across this vast body of water. If you screw up, if the bats hit you and you fall off the boat, you are in for just a world of pain. So it's nice to just sit and just chill. You can also see the transparency effect on the cloak in action again. And before we know it, we're at the other side. We find the Merman statue. Curious. This is a relic. And it summons the Oarsman, which uh, is a, an odd thing because he's right here. So, wherever would we want to summon him to? Well, that is a question that you're going to have to just hold on to for quite a while. We will get there. But this is something crucial for much later on. I found these candles here, and I thought maybe they would make a good point of reference. So, right now. Alucard's head is lined up with the with the top of the candle, sort of the bottom of the flame there, and we're going to go ahead and equip the secret boots. Boom! We're now lined up with the flame. Look at that. Our height is discreetly increased. Take them off, and you can actually see uh, very quickly the transition back to normal size. Now, you might be tempted to think, oh, there must be some other function that they fill, like you have to wear them at a certain place or whatever. No. Nope. That's all they do. They literally just discreetly increase your height. If you want your character to look slightly taller, then you put the secret boots on. I think that's fantastic, and it's just one of the many, many little things about this game that I love. So we're ex exiting the underground caverns. We've come back around to another, to a familiar area and a familiar soundtrack. We're gonna open up this shortcut later for uh, later on, so we can get in and out more easily. And hey, presto! We're fighting the fish people again. This is back near the very beginning of the game. And now we have a little bit of walking to do to get back up to uh, another fork in the road, so to speak. So right now we're going to make our way up and get to that part of the upper left that's kind of a big staircase. That's where we're headed next. That's the other place that the Jewel of Open allows us to get to. 
So we get on with the tedium of fighting the stupid zombies. We go all the way through the laboratories and things. And by this point, you're more or less one-shotting everything, which feels nice. It's, it's always kind of good. What I like about these games is as you get stronger, you explore places, and then you come back to places you've already been, you get to do kind of a victory lap here and feel really good about yourself. So this is a ledge that we ignored last time. And we ignored it because this door is right here, and we wouldn't have been able to go anywhere anyway. Yeah, sure, I'll change it out for the holy water. So, we meet again, Alucard. It seems so. As friendly as ever, I see. It's strange. This castle is different than I remember it. This castle is a creature of chaos. It may take many incarnations. So I can't trust my memories, huh? Oh well, I'll do my best. Good luck. So there you have it, another pleasant exchange with Maria, and a little bit of retroactive continuity as to why the castle is always different in every one of the Castlevania games. It's, it's a creature unto itself. We've arrived at the Royal Chapel, which is going to be the place that we're exploring for the next bit. You can see it kind of goes up and over there. There's quite a lot left to do. We're going to take a save here. and get on with exploring the spooky chapel. Kind of nice uh, foresty background there, it looks very pleasant. So these fellows are gonna shoot fire at us, the bone pillars there. And you could do what I did and hit them a whole bunch. We also have these corner guards. And the holy water is just gonna work gangbusters against both of these guys. Uh, relatively inexpensive in terms of hearts. It does a lot of continuous damage, especially to the uh, bone pillars. And uh, there's a whole bunch of vases and items and stuff that we can't get to just yet. We're going to have to come back through here later on. This handy steel ball that's at the top is for if you're going back down the stairs. You simply take out the bone pillar and it bounces down ahead of you and you can just follow it down. It'll take out everything in your way. It's actually rather convenient. Hopefully I'll have a chance to demonstrate it to you in a later video. But for now, we're only going up. We've arrived in the main sort of sanctuary here. Excellent 3D effect in the background there that I've always been quite fond of. And here we have a puppet sword, which is just, it's too many swords. Stop it. The one that you really want, of course, is the one in the middle. But it's going to be a whole jerk about it. Often I ignore this thing and just kind of run past it, but... For the purposes of this video, I thought I'd engage and get cut up a little bit. And I'll level up, so hey, can't complain about that. So this does take us to a different area. Weird. Uh, we're not going to be able to go any further in because there's a wall and a button in the way, but we'll grab the Knight Shield. And uh, there it is. It's an armored knight's shield. Okay, well, that makes sense, I guess. Ups our defense a little bit more. And looks kind of cool to boot. Now, something to note about that place is... Uh, that wasn't on our map. The map that we bought at the store. Is it possible that there are places not shown on the map? Interesting. Anyway, here we get to uh, the big vertical sections. But first, we're going to take a little stop off to the side here in the confession booth. This is a another one of the uh, completely useless details that were added to the game. You can sit in the chairs. A ghostly priest will come and listen to your confession. Cross himself and fade away. Then he'll drop something just for you. Grape juice. Nice. If you sit in his side, a ghostly lady arrives. And occasionally, tries to stab you. 
It's actually a random chance. Uh, there's um, a, a chance that it could just be normal lady who shows up, sits down, sobs briefly, and watch for the little head nod when I stand up. A little bow. Thank you. You're welcome. Occasionally you get the bad version of her. You may also get the bad version of the priest, who chuckles briefly, throws the curtain shut, and again tries to kill you. The grape juice is not essential. None of this has any, any real reason to be here other than just being sort of interesting. It's sparkling juice. And uh, it's completely easy to bypass. Not even that much health. But it's just one of those things they put in. We have some extremely annoying uh, skeleton s skeleton boomerang fellows here. I can't remember if they're actually called skelerangs or if I just made that name up. No, they're skelerangs! That's perfect! And if you don't get to them very quickly, close the distance between yourself and them, they will keep you at bay with those stupid, stupid boomerangs. Now we're working our way up the bell towers. And we meet my mortal nemesis, Black Crow. You see, you can't just climb up the other side. You have to go up a ways on this side and then jump across. But Black Crow is going to mess with that. And then I'm just going to fall off. So sometimes I'm just, I get in my own way, as you do. It does one damage, but it's just the indignity of it, you know? Being attacked by a stupid crow. Oh, that one's gone. The winged guards are just going to keep spawning in at random from the sides. Not too difficult to deal with. And here we have another new enemy. It is Hunting Girl. She's going to try and fence with you a little bit. But if you just aim for the sword, you should be fine. Here we have a hallway with a whole lot of spikes in it that will do a lot of damage if we try to uh, do anything with that, so it's another one we're just going to have to make a mental note of and come back to later. Alright, hunting girl. Stop it. That's a poor blue raven that doesn't really do anything. Just kind of hangs out there. And if you climb to the top of the bell towers... You get some good stuff. Strength potion there. Some new armor. Silver plate. Very nice. Let's put it on. Just as the uh, name implies. And here we have a nice connecting hallway. Some bone halberds there. A couple of bats. Bone halberds didn't take so long to do their little flare there. They might actually get around to stabbing me. Here we have the second bell tower. And I'm going to try the dust again. Or whatever it is. Salt? I don't know. Of course, before moving on, we want to quickly get to the top of this one. Just take a quick look up there in the attic. We found a zircon. That's nice. We'll sell that later to the librarian. So the uh, salt is reasonably effective against the uh, undead there, so that's nice. Music stops. What does it mean? That's right, it's a boss. It's a hippogriff. It's part bird, uh, possibly part lion. I'm not really sure what all a hippogriff is. Breathes fire, but you can easily duck under that. Really sort of a weak sauce uh, creature all around. The mural in the back is quite frightening, though.
occasionally it will lay some eggs. And you can try and take those out before they turn into little birds that aggravate you further. I tried to be kind of cool and use my fireball maneuver, but it turns out it's difficult to time. But it didn't really matter. Goodbye, Hippogriff. Impressive. You're very strong. What is it you want? You didn't come here to tell me that. You're right. Do you know the name Richter Belmont? Of the Belmont clan? Of course, but... He disappeared about a year ago, and I'm sure he's here. If you see him, please let me know. As you wish, my lady. Thank you. So, you do know how to be a gentleman. And with that, she wanders off. You may have noticed a little bit of a difference in the uh, speech bubbles when they were talking about their various Belmonts. The one that Alucard is thinking of is actually Trevor Belmont from Castlevania 3, which is the, uh, the last time that he had an adventure with Belmont involved. Uh, Alucard is actually a playable character in Castlevania 3 on the Nintendo, so that little Ness sprite version of, Bel of the Belmont guy is what he remembers. And I think that's awesome. Later on, there'll be some more shoutouts to Castlevania 3. And there's probably lots more that I don't even know about. Because again, I'm not over familiar with the series before this point. Anyway, we're going to take a, a little save there. And um, that's going to be it for this video. After this, we have to head up to the very tippy top of the castle. And then some other stuff is going to happen. Thank you ever so much for watching, as always. And we'll see you next mission.